because that's the way that I'm going to teach the next two examples. So in this case, um, basically what we have is we have two zeros with multiplicity of two. So what that's important is because even though we want to find the zeros, we know that the factors are raised to a power of two. So again, forgetting just looking at the zeros, we have x equals negative two, x equals two. So the factored form is going to be x plus two and x minus two. However, they're both raised to a multiplicity of two. Now, this one's not as bad, at least as far as here, because I know these are binomial squared. And I know binomial squared multiplied to give me a perfect square trinomial. And if you guys remember, perfect square trinomials is the first term squared, last term squared, and then two times these two terms. So it's going to be 2 times 2x, which is positive 4x plus 4. <coughs> That's my perfect square for a positive. And if negative, the only difference is going to be the middle term is going to be negative. And that's just knowing your perfect square trinomials. Then again, if I want to multiply trinomials, you can apply distributive property, but usually people make mistakes once we get up to trinomials. So I'll apply the box method in this case. And I'll just write one up top. Doesn't matter which one you represent as the length or the width. And then you just multiply the length and the width for each box. So x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. 4x cubed plus 4x squared. Over here, it's negative 4x cubed minus 16x squared minus 16x. And then last but not least, we have 4 times x squared is 4x squared um, plus 16x and then plus 16. Then you guys can see we have some common terms. But in addition to some common terms, these terms actually cancel out. Right? One's positive, one's negative. These terms add to 0 as well. Right? So that's kind of nice. So my final equation is x to the fourth. This becomes 8, so that's a negative 8x squared plus 16. Which brings us up to a very good polynomial.